Yay! Okay. <laughs> so I am so, so, so happy to be speaking with you today, Gabriela. I have been so in awe of the incredible collages that you've been creating these last, you know, was it 30? Are you on day 32 now? I'm almost at like two months. I don't even know how many I've made. I think like oh the gosh. second week of May will be like two months. So I wow. probably almost like 45 collages at this point. I made one a day. Yes, and so I, I, you know, really wanted to connect with you and talk with you about your in powerful art practice, your powerful, you know, um, magical practice, your witchy practice, your incredible presence, you know, in our culture, and also wanted just to I'll share a little bit of, you know, resources and how art has been both kind of supporting both of us, because that's something that I know that you and I have in common that I really yes, think. You are the art witch. I'm so honored to be here with you and to be able to just receive all of your incredible art spells. It's like, I, you make me want to go on Instagram. So thank you for that. Because <laughs> the internet is, as much as it is a place of light, can also be kind of a stressful place. So thank you for just casting your beautiful, magical spells for the Quarian Age. It's so, uh, we're so lucky to be alive right now with technology. I really am so thankful that I don't have to like, write letters to people to like be able to contact them like it makes the world feel like a lot less daunting because it feels I mean it's scary because it feels bigger but at the same time like we wouldn't be able to have this conversation if we were kicking it 50 years ago you know what I mean so right um, I know and I think that is something that um in some ways as you were saying like the internet can be like negative or can be difficult to like navigate the internet sometimes but it also there's, it's such a deep resource, and I feel like the ways that you and I both engage with the internet are really, I feel, magical and transformational. Yeah, because, yeah so I'd love if you want to share a little bit about, like, maybe um, what your practice is, uh, what you do, and also if you want to share a little bit about your incredible collage project that you've been Yay. working on. So, yeah, so much. Sure. Hi, guys. My name is Gabriella Herstic. I am a witch, a fashion alchemist, and an author based in LA. My, my work usually is either going to be about witchcraft and magic or style and glamour, sexuality, or the combo of all of those things, intersection of all of those things. Um, before I was uh, publicly affiliated with witchcraft or before I started writing about witchcraft, I guess, um, I had a fashion blog. So I've been taking like outfit photos of myself for over a decade, a lot of awkward, photos out there of me um but I've always like something that I've always I guess done is like turn to myself as my own muse like I've always loved dressing up and dressing up as like the goddess of the moon or dressing up after tarot cards and embodying their messages through glamour since fashion has been like a really really my main mode of self-expression since I was 14 years old I'm 26 now um so during quarantine I've I, I don't even know how I decided to do this, but I started taking photos of myself and collaging. And I've been collaging photos of myself for a few years now. Um, it started when my first book came out two years ago. Um, but I like made the commitment to make a collage every day that I'd be in quarantine. Kind of just thinking that it was gonna be like two weeks, you know what I mean? Like I didn't really expect it to be like a long-term thing, but I'm really fixed sign, like I have a stellium in Aquarius and a stellium in Scorpio so like I'm very good at commitment and having that like commitment to myself now I'm like well I can't freaking break it um <laughs> so I've been making a collage every day and it's been honestly like I have a, a daily meditation practice too that's another like thing that I I can't I have to do it's like a non-negotiable for me um so my my practice with both glamour and collaging and art and magic are really rooted in the power of the goddess of the divine feminine and of the earth so like I'm super inspired by different faces of the goddesses of love I have Lakshmi behind me I have Isis on one wall Babylon on one wall Venus on another wall like it really that really I feel like is um my main mode of worship and expression that's kind of the crossover of both my practice with witchcraft and my practice with um with collaging as well as just like 
loving exploring taboo so like most of my collages are very like sexy like I do a lot of like self-worship through working with like lingerie and stuff which to me is also a form of the divine feminine that has been more vilified um so it's been yeah I feel like if I hadn't had this creative practice I would be in a much darker place but having something to look forward to and having like getting dressed up and feeling myself has just like really really been a powerful process for me I'm gonna put my computer up I promise I'm still listening um, how about you? What is your process with art like? I know that you create these incredible, incredible spells that trans transcend boundaries, transcend like dimensions. I feel like they're, you know, manifested on the physical and then sent to the etheric through the internet and then just like end up in so many of our hearts. It's really, you're like such a psychedelic, incredible art witch. Wow. <laughs> what do I even say to that? <laughs> Thank you um, for saying that and yeah. for sharing about your powerful process and how how these you know beautiful parts of your practice come together and get woven together and are so supportive. And gosh, I feel like so many connections to what you said, like so many connections. Um, the first one I feel like really resonates with me is <clears throat> this idea of like kind of donning or kind of officiating yourself as this divine being, right? And I also have that in my practice and I very much have dressed up as different goddesses. Um, for example, for one of my art shows that I did um, last year at Vincent Price Art Museum, I dressed up as Tate Haramarazzi, which is this mm -hmm. goddess who is in um, the... <clears throat> sorry, the east of Mexico, and she's the goddess of the ocean, goddess of water, and so I love this idea of kind of working with fabrics, working with, you know, things that make you feel beautiful, empowered, um, and I also really resonate with you having a kind of meditation practice. I feel for myself, there's a deep connection between my meditative practice, my divination practice, my energy work, my magic, my communion yeah. with plants and animals and ancestors, and with the work that I do. And I feel like it's also really powerful to kind of almost in, imbue our intention into these um, works that we are creating and, and witnessing like how it both creates a sanctuary for ourselves, right? That we can really rely on and have, as you were saying, like this fixed thing that we get to do every day. Um, and it also creates sanctuaries for other people. You know, I definitely have been witnessing all the people engaging with your collage work and how much it's also been so healing to witness it you know, and to be a part of your journey, it's just really, as I said, resonates so much with my practice. And I think that's also why, you know, I was so excited to connect with you around this, because I really feel like you're someone who's really uplifting our communities. And so many people turn to you to really receive that love and care and wisdom. And I think that's something that it's so, yeah, I love that you get to share that. And that also, like, it's, it's so beautiful. It's recursive, right? That we all heal from it. We all get to, like, benefit from it. That's how I feel about you. So thank you so much. I receive that with so much um, gratitude. So thank you for that. I just, I, I so admire your work and the way that you, you just like, I really feel like you take little pieces of magic from like all these dimensions and you make them into this like little portal. And I just love like that you're also a social media witch, like an Instagram, like it's a spell, right? Like we can put that spell out there and imbue it with energy so that every like charges it. And so that way everybody who is interacting with it also is a piece of that. And I just, I see the way that you uplift our community and the way that you give back and it really inspires me. So it is such an honor to be a reflection of the divine for you and for that. And so thank you for you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, and I think, you know, something I wanted to talk with you about is, and I don't know if you resonate with this, but, you know, one thing that my practice really helps me with is I'm able to really bring to it, you know, especially when I notice in my meditation or where things come up, like especially shadow parts, parts of me that maybe are afraid, that feel angry. Mm -hmm. I'm able to like bring that into my practice and work with it and mm -hmm. many times like transmute it and create yeah. something out of it. And so for me, and I think that's definitely, I actually talked about this recently um, on, on the Witch Wave um, with Pam Grossman. I was, you know, just sharing how, you know, for me, it's like 
it's a sacred sanctuary. And I think sometimes people might, because I feel like your work is so beautiful, so empowering. And I think people sometimes might be like, where's the like, the negative or like the, you know, the things that are happening. Cause I've definitely gotten that myself. And I think I've definitely shared with people that, you know, my practice is so beautiful because it's a place where I transmute and where yeah. I create something yeah. out of that pain and out of that fear. So I don't know if you resonate with that or if you want to share Absolutely. anything about that. I, that's something I've been thinking a lot about. And um, I think maybe the last time we talked, we talked on this a little bit, but for me, it's like, I definitely have, you know, moments of like deep fear or anxiety. I don't, honestly, it was like something I real, I've been realizing the past few days. Is, like I, I'm very, I'm hard on myself. Like I have very high expectations, but I also am at a place right now where I have a lot of self love. So I think my, although like, you know, there's always, there's a shadow, there's always a shadow. And I do a lot of, of work with that. Um, but I think that through my meditation practice, through going to therapy and through having this consistent non-negotiable like meditation practice too, I've learned how to dwell in those negative spaces, but in a, con in a sacred container, like you said, mm -hmm. like I have, like, I allow myself to experience that because like, I know how to create a ritual out of it or a container out of it. So I can sit with it. And like you said, transmute it instead of just like dwelling in that negative space. And I think a lot of the way for me, at least which I process those parts of myself is through like shadow work that I don't publicly share, but also through my relationship with kink as like a, a vehicle for that. And I definitely feel like that is a big part of my, um, of my collages. And I think that a lot of my, a big part of the shadow, a big part of my shadow, a big part of what I'm always kind of working through is um not feeling shameful about my like sexual self-expression and I do I, I mean that's like a big 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 part of my collages is like I'm like hanging out in lingerie which is something that like I love doing um and I I do definitely feel like when I see that as art and I treat it as art and I'm able to have even if I'm not making a collage around it I'm able to have that space to observe it and commune with it and like hear its message that I'm able to transmute that either through spell work through meditation or through creating art and collaging I definitely feel like um such a good question because I definitely feel like the two are definitely tied um I think that yeah this pa the 2020 for me um I, d I made the intention to really lean into the soft, like being soft in my softness. And um, I, I mean, I'm super Scorpio. There's always going to be that like taboo element of what I do. I realized too that like I feel the most fulfilled when I'm exploring the taboo, whether it's through like magic, whether it's through sexuality or even glamour, which I do feel like is still, you know, beauty is still stigmatized in a lot of ways. Um, so yeah, I do think that um, art is just like, the most potent vessel for exploring those things and for literally creating something out of that darkness, right? Like making something beautiful out of it. It's like shadow and light need one another to mean anything at all. So I think finding that yes. balance is so important. A hundred percent. And I feel like it's so powerful to be able to have resources available, right? For us to like work with it. Like, you, you know, you named a bunch of stuff like meditation, therapy, creating yeah. sacred containers, yeah. kink, yeah. right? Performance. There's so many ways that we can embody mm -hmm. and work with these kind of things that we're sometimes having to, to grapple with that we have to radically accept sometimes, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Definitely feel like having those like creating those spaces for yourself to process whether it's meditation or tapping or like you said therapy like so vital right now it's so vital yeah so I'd, I'd love to hear from you in terms of like creative practice if you have any like resources you want to share or anything that's like helped you because I think that's something that maybe we could offer our communities it's like letting yeah. folks know what what might be out there um I just got an iPad because I was like found it for cheap it's like a refurbished one and I was like I'm gonna be in quarantine for a while like I gotta commit to this and it's been really great I'm still learning it but I um people always ask me like what what I use to make my collages it's like I use powerpoint I cut out myself in photoshop with a magnetic lasso tool and then I layer everything in powerpoint and I just get like 
honestly, my backgrounds for my collages on like Pinterest and stuff. And I Google vintage, like rose illustrations. Like if I have a specific thing, but what I did is I made a PowerPoint doc, like a master doc with all of the elements that I use to collage, mm. like jewels and flowers and swords. And that way, like, it's just kind of like, I dress up, take my, out my outfit photo. And then like, I already kind of have this like, brand kit I guess like I don't know what it's called portfolio of things I pull from so for me like glam again like fashion is such a big part of like who I am and my self-expression is so important to me that like that is like the main piece and I just have had like years and years of collecting lingerie to like work with but um yeah Pinterest is such a great resource for inspiration for photos um but yeah I don't really like I wish I had more more um more tools but also like leaning into like working with divination and goddesses adds inspiration um like today i'm doing a collage based on the emperor card because we're in a emperor year because it's four and then april's the fourth month which is also the emperor so i'm like saying honoring that energy through collages and like i i think the biggest thing for me is like using my practice with art as a reflection of my magical practice like depending what I'm moving through in that, like using that as inspiration. So um, yeah, meditation, goddesses, tarot, and then PowerPoint, the real MVP. So nothing crazy fancy, but I'm learning. I, I would have never guessed that you made your collages on PowerPoint. That is so incredible. And that's like a, a resource that is free online that you can yeah. use, right? Like They had a, the PowerPoint that I have on my computer has a remove background button. Mm -hmm. which is really helpful but i don't think i don't know if the newer versions but it's pretty much the lasso tool in power in photoshop so totally um and you know i i want to share if you don't have photoshop because i know a lot of you know yeah. folks don't have photoshop there is actually a website called photo p like you know p-e-a photo p.com and it literally is a free photoshop that you could just use on your on any browser so that's like definitely a resource that I've had to use and I feel like it's really helpful when you're needing those like kind of touch-ups or things like that um, and I also definitely take advantage of like kind of free software online there are so many like free versions of like video yeah. or even like animation software there's and you so I think that's something everything. you yeah, and I think, everything you need to like figure stuff out so yeah. Golden, it's the golden age of information. Even though the internet can be a dark place, it's the Aquarian age, baby. It's like helping us connect and learn and grow in so many beautiful ways. Definitely, and I, you know, and I really resonate with what you were saying around divination because I feel like that it's been such a deep resource for me, both personally, like to learn more about myself, but also to learn about like my past, my ancestors, to communicate mm -hmm. with other beings, and yeah. also as you're naming, yeah, and it's, it's and and as like a creative practice, like support, it is like so divine, like it mm -hmm. really can communicate and support you and help guide you in your practice. So, I love that you're also working with divination with goddesses. Yeah with with meditation with prayer with spell work i think these are all things that just kind of can blend and come together and Absolutely. i think you know a lot of other cultures like don't see them as separate right like culture Absolutely. and art and spell work and magic and like they're all kind of woven into this beautiful tapestry and, and so i definitely feel like it's good for folks to know that that art creativity like magic you know meditation those are all things that you can many times make for free yeah. and find ways to kind of channel your energy and i think that's also a big thing it's like moving energy through your body right through like performance yeah. or dance movement. I, love I love that how about you what are your favorite i mean i know you shared a few resources but what's what's been the biggest i guess biggest part of your artistic practice that you work i don't know i don't know what i was trying to say i'm so sorry where did that where did that train of thought go i don't know but um, what are your, what are the resources that you lean on most heavily for your artistic practice? I would say, you know, honestly, for my self-care work, um, I definitely do a lot of Photoshop, you know, or photop.com. <laughs> I so, do a lot well, of that. that you, you ha I, uh, even before I see that it's like your name or your Instagram handle, like attached to your work, I can see something and be like, oh yeah, I know that. That's it. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> 
I know it is, it's really beautiful as artists to like find our aesthetic and the things. I love what you're naming about your, your elements. I think that's so powerful that you, I've never thought to do that. And I like listening to you, I'm like, I have my elements too. And that's so amazing that you like organize them and have them in one space. Cause I feel mine are very diffuse and all over the place. So i um, so inspired by that. And I think, you know, it's, so, yeah, it's amazing to witness each other's like aesthetics. And I, I just wanted to share, I recently got your book. <laughs> this amazing, speaking of elements, Bewitching oh. the Elements. I'm so, so happy to have this book. Yeah, it is so gorgeous. Your aesthetic, your art practice, and the way that you've woven in. I haven't even read it yet, but I'm like already like in love with this book because I could feel its intention and the energy. And I just, yeah, I wanted to ask you a little bit about this, about like how you work with elements and if you kind of bring any elements into your creative practice I definitely you know you were talking about um kind of working with with the emperor card or working with um divination but do you work with elements at all in your creative practice or yeah I feel like they're kind of it's like absolute yes but they're definitely more like subtly woven in there most of the time the collages I make are based around either like an outfit I have or something I want to wear so like I feel like the glamour kind of will reflect different elements, um, but I haven't made collages specifically based on the elements, but that would be really fun. Ooh. But like, I definitely have times where I'll be like, like one, like if I'm wearing like a, I have one that's like a jaguar e collage with like a, and like a leopard print. So like that definitely, like the earth energy was coming through. Like today's kind of an earthy, fiery energy. Um, so I feel like it's more so that like they'll lead me to different ways of embodying magic more so than being like direct mm. vehicles for them but I'll always like put music on I burn a lot of incense and I'm like I definitely feel like the elements are kind of just like I'm like intrinsically connected to them in a lot of ways where they're like such a part of like my daily ritual practice in the morning that it's um their magic is a more subtle but I definitely like now to think of it I like I could go and be like, oh, this is like a very eerie one. But I think that it's more of just like spirit where they're all woven together. And it's just kind of like how the energy that I'm carrying is carrying that. But that's a really, I should, I should do collages based on the elements. That'd be oh my really gosh, fun. please. I would love that. And I think, do you want to share anything about your book and about like kind of how it's been to like release it? And also oh. just about like, I think this is such, I've definitely been working so much with the elements. I'm so yeah. excited to connect with this book. And I feel like it's been so transformative in my own spiritual practice <laughs> to connect with the elements. So I'd love to hear you chat a little yeah. bit about it. So, I wrote this book because I wanted a theme or I wanted it to be around something that we all have a relationship already, like something that we, you don't have to come from a certain background or a certain class to like be able to interact with. I think the elements transcend everything that we all have a relationship with the sun and the earth beneath our feet and the rain and, and like we all know each of the elements just from being alive from washing our hands and going outside and breathing air and like feeling the wind on our cheek we're already kind of the elements transcend everything so um i wanted to share the practices that have been transformative in my own life which is divination which is astrology which is working with different faces of the divine feminine um and also like share the elements message and I think the biggest thing for me right now is that like, I obviously had no idea that it would come out in the middle of a worldwide pandemic. Um, but I feel like, like since I started writing the book, I've already had a, like a consistent daily meditation practice and something I've continued through now. And like, I feel like it's like that, that with my artistic practice has been what's keeping me afloat. And like, it just feels, um, I just feel really thankful and really honored and really privileged to be able to share this work, especially right now. I'm like, you know, like, I don't really, I don't, I don't even care how much money I make off of it. I'm just like, I hope that it gets to whoever needs it because I feel like these practices are so necessary right now. I think a lot of the times it can be kind of overwhelming, um, with where, like, knowing where to begin with a magical practice mm. or figuring out what you need in that moment, in that day. And, like, I know in therapy there's, like, what is it, like, 
mad, sad, glad, and like something else. Like there's these like four emotions that everything's supposed to be kind of categorized in. Right. And I feel like the elements are kind of like that too. And like, once you understand, you know, like earth is grounding and air is presence and expansion and fire is, once you understand the like flavor of each element, then you can kind of, it's easier to recognize what you need to feel safe, what you need to feel supported. Mm. Um, so I, I just, and I have a quiz in my book to help with that. And I have like a little worksheet to help you make a ritual practice with all of the elements. But I really feel like, yeah, like embodiment practices and ritual and like working alongside the earth, especially now, it just feels like vital and it feels really important. So I just hope it helps people. I just hope it helps people. It's like, yeah. care about people, you know? <laughs> It's so beautiful for the elements to create a container, right? Just like we've been talking uh -huh. about with, you know, art practice, with divination, with magic, with spiritual practice, it's <laughs> the elements help us create structure. And I think, yeah. Yeah, I think something that's so beautiful, another another one of the ma many connections between us is, um, you know, so this year I was a part of the Many Moons Lunar Planner with us for, you know, created by Seraphith Goddess Diener. Yeah, such an honor to be invited to be a part of that planner. And um, I created as like kind of the first full moon um, spell was definitely based around the elements. And oh, it was really for that reason, like exactly what you said yeah. was the elements help give us structure, help us yeah. realize how we have to be organized yeah. and help us with that organization. They help kind of pull us in the directions that we need to go in some ways. And so yeah. I love hearing you say that. And I'm, I'm just thrilled to do this. Um, what you were saying, it's a quiz at the end. I'm excited to also like the idea of opening up a space for people to create something that, you know, really affirms who they are. And it's like an opening, right? An opening of the yeah. input through the elements. Cause I feel like we all need containers. And sometimes, you know, I know myself, I have like spiritual trauma from the past from like growing up in certain religions and stuff. And so having a, a natural element, a, you know, to really around you could be so such an opening that is so neutral and so loving and so caring because our elements are so loving you know they're so they caring are. they are I love that like literally gave me chills so thank you so much how have they been um part of your own work how do they influence your art Oh my goodness, so much. <laughs> I, you know, I love what you said about like doing kind of when you do energy work or meditation to really like invoke the element. So mm -hmm. they really have grounded my spiritual practice as something that I can really be like, do I have them all here with me? Yeah. And really realizing when they're all together, then that's like when the spirit emerges. And mm -hmm. that's been so transformative and something that's been such a blessing is that uh, you know the more i've learned about my own people the Vidarica of mexico that they really work with the elements too and that there is a, a way that they're used as a sacred container as well and that's mm -hmm. just yeah feeling that resonance of like wow this is something that so many witches and mystics have worked with and also that my own people have worked with this oh, too and yeah. that has been such a blessing to really be like okay this is this transcends so much of like the colonization and so much of the pain that has been created around spirituality and religion is like the elements have always been there you know and yeah. so that's yeah definitely transformed my own work and my own spiritual practice and you know i honor the elements in all the work that i do now uh -huh. and yeah so yeah definitely that's why i feel like when i first saw that you were coming out with this book i was like oh my gosh there's so many connections already between us but i feel like Here's another one, a really massive one, you know. Yeah. I know, I feel like since writing this book, it's like, that's been like the lens, like everything is like, I, everything you can like, <laughs> makes more sense, right? It's like, everything is everything. And I feel like once you find those things that resonate, it like, new universes open up. So it's a never ending well of magic, baby. We're yeah. never gonna <laughs> think about it. Thank goddess, yes. Yeah, and you know, one last thing I want to say before we like, you know, end this, I, I really love, love your love of the sacred femme. And I think that that's also something that is, I think, so important to center and to honor and yeah. to connect with. And I know it's also been so healing for me to connect with my own sacred femme mm -hmm. and with the sacred femme that surrounds me. And mm -hmm. I think that that's, yeah, I really think that's also like a deep kind of container and medicine that is... Yeah. Yeah, it's so powerful. So thank you so much for also naming that. Oh, thank 
thank you. Thank you for reflecting that back at me. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm just so happy that we got to connect and I'm so glad that we get to share this with our communities and uh, thank you so March much. And magic and the divine will save us all. We just have to have a little bit of faith, keep going one day at a time and telling people we appreciate them, finding gratitude and you're just such a beautiful, shining example of the endless possibilities of magic. So yeah, thank you likewise. For so you, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay, well, um, I guess we could say bye, right? <laughs> bye. Thank you, guys. Bye. Thank you so much.